Big welcome to Director Alison Clayman, who returns to TIFF with her engaging new documentary reflecting on music icon Alanis Morissette, Thank Rise so to, <laughs> to Rock Stardom. Welcome, Alison. Thank you. This has been like the dream for how to introduce this film to the world. So it really feels like the perfect match and like the the vision has materialized. So we really appreciate it. Amazing. So you've made films about Chinese artists, uh, Ai Weiwei, Right Wing Strategist, Steve Bannon, among other subjects. What was it that drew you to Alanis Morissette? I mean, I, I brought a prop since I can. This is the first CD I ever bought as a, I don't know, maybe 12 year old. This is really the CD from my house. I mean, the album Jagged Little Pill um, was a, a piece of art that meant a lot to me. And I have a very vivid memory of, you know, I can, I can bring myself back to lying on my, you know, twin bed, it, you know, as a middle schooler with this CD on the boom box, you know, pouring over the lyrics, feeling all the feelings, you know, singing along. Um, so this album really meant a lot to me. Uh, but to be honest, I didn't know that much about her. Maybe it was partly about, I was maybe like just y too young to, you know, have gone to any of the concerts or I don't know, I wasn't cool enough to like go to a show when I was 12. And, um, you know, I, it was someone who's like art spoke to me so much, but I wasn't like absorbed in the celebrity kind of, you know, culture of the time. And I think it was a different time. You know, people didn't have Instagram or Twitter. You weren't engaging with artists in that way. Um, so I felt like this was a great mix of having something that meant so much to me and a lot of things that was there to discover. Um, and the fact that it was 25 years that had passed since this album had been um, released, I think was a really interesting thing for me. As you mentioned, I've done a lot of um, portraits of very uh, interesting, um, high profile, if you will, like people, um, but none had really been retrospective in that sense. Um, and I think 25 years is like a really great amount of time um, for Alanis and for the other people um, involved in the making of and release of this album to kind of reflect on that time. Um, I think, you know, it gave opportunities to talk about things and think about things um, that in a way that like wouldn't have been true 20 years later or 15 years later or 10 years later. Yeah, that's great that it coincides with the Jagged Little Pill 25th anniversary. How do you see the film contributing to create an entire new fan base? Oh man, I mean, it's like really was a real uh, wake up call to me of, you know, my own age to realize that there's like a real cutoff and at, at certain point, young people like aren't necessarily familiar with this album, you know, and even some members of my team who were in their late twenties or even like 30, 31, it was sort of like, oh yeah, I think I've heard of Jagged Little Pill, but sure enough, I mean, working on the film turned them into really big fans of this album. Um, and as we've, you know, shared the movie, I know our EP Bill Simmons, his teenage daughter, you know, watched it. And the next day she was like, plucking out the tune of uh, ironic and belting her heart out, you know, and he sent me a little, a little note about that. And I just think it's, it's an undeniable album that I do think really lives up. Um, but this gives a chance for people to really appreciate what it meant at the time. And then I think through that, it can create a new fan base. And how did it come about? Did you, you, uh, Alanis, Alanis, or did you, how, how? Um, so the um, she was already in conversation uh, and her team were, you know, sort of open to being a part of this project with HBO. And um, when the idea was suggested uh, to me or just to see if I was interested, I mean, I got real serious. I was like, yes, like <laughs> I very much am interested in this. And so we began to, uh, you know, and the way it starts, like any, you know, good doc, I mean, it has to come from the, uh, you know, personal relationship and, you know, kind of the 
acceptance of the subject to have someone, you know, take on this project. So, um, you know, Alanis and I, uh, you know, talked on the phone. We did uh, a couple FaceTimes. I think she probably went and, you know, Googled everything about me at like 2 a.m. and watched a lot of my, my films. Um, and then we were all set to begin filming together. It was literally the beginning of March, 2020. Um, so I was about to get on a plane to go she, uh, to California, to the Bay Area where she lives. And very wisely, the Bay Area shut down. Um, you know, it was still possible to have traveled at that point because New York wasn't quite as wise. I could have gotten on the plane, but smartly the Bay Area shut down. And so we kind of put it on pause um, and ended up um, sh uh, ended up picking up the shooting part, you know, in July. It became a very different project. You know, I was going to meet her maybe to film a little, to start to digitize her personal archive from that time, which we knew was gonna be a big component, but we didn't know what was contained in all of these high eight tapes, beta cams, film reels. You know, She had this giant storage unit, very well organized, um, but we didn't know exactly what everything was gonna be. All of that had to be put on pause. Um, and we were going to then film her on her tour, which is just picking up right now. Um, since everything was on pause, it became like a different project in some respects. Like I went out and spent time with her just one-on-one -on -one and we like never left the house. <laughs> you know, it was, uh, we spent a couple of weeks together um, and I kind of got a rhythm for her life with her family um, and just to have a lot of conversations and conversations late into the night, kind of all culminating in, you know, our master interview for the film that we mm -hmm. return to often. Um, and just on a delay, we got to digitize all the material. And so, you know, I couldn't be more thrilled with how it turned out. Um, but, you know, can you imagine it would have been a very different film if it had been based on kind of trailing around while she was on the 25 year anniversary tour, right? That would be a totally different thing. So talk to me a little bit about that and how it relates to, you know, celebrating her as an artist. But because you have that intimacy with, you know, that long interview, it also confronts the challenges that she faced, you know. So how did you balance all of those elements? Well, I think, um, you know, in the weeks that we spent together, I also had the benefit of listening to her and watching her. I filmed a lot of her doing interviews because she also had a new album come out last year so that kind of combined with the 25 year anniversary she was actually doing a lot of press it's just this kind of press right like talking to to a uh you know a, on a zoom or on the phone um but this is actually something that you know with Ai Weiwei with Steve Bannon you know with with high profile figures I love watching them be interviewed by other people um again and again and again. I mean, it can be a little tedious, but I first, I, I think you can see so much about um, how they respond. Also what people tend to come at them with, you know, what are the questions that people can't help but ask again and again <laughs> of these figures. Um, so with Alanis, I sort of got to, I filmed a lot of that, which for the most part is not in the film at all, though we had, you know, hours and hours of that um, as well. But in the end, in this case, it kind of became all leading up to our interview. And our interview was really amazing. And I, we did it over two days. And my favorite thing was the first day we like didn't even get to Jagged Little Pill. And that was kind of, I, I was kind of proud of that because I feel like, you know, the, the subject of this film is this album and the celebration of what it was and sort of a deeper look at what it meant for Alanis, but that kind of includes who she was at that time. She was 19 years old when she wrote this album, 2021, as it's you know coming out into the world. Um, who is that person and what has she gone through in her life up to that point? Obviously she's gone through many, many other things since then as well, but you know maybe that's for the 10 part series that she'll do one day. But for this, <laughs> I loved um, getting to talk to her uh, so comprehensively about that time and also to kind of, um, you know, we talked about what are the ways that we can choose to be specific and, you know, and and not just refer to things like the patriarchy, but actually like 
give specific examples of, of anecdotes, um, you know, and for her, as it, you know, you might know even from her music and now certainly from watching the film, I mean, she's not one to just go around and, you know, uh, like she's literally the whole intrigue of you ought to know was who is this about? And she's never, you know, been specific in public. So sort of bridging that gap of like, what are the things that 25 years later like should be talked about in a direct way? What are the things that we can name so that people can like appreciate through the specificity of her story, the universal aspects of it um, and through her personal experiences feel their personal experiences are being represented. So I think that was like a really big part of kind of what we talked about and what she brilliantly, you know, does in the interview. What was the kind of biggest thing you learned from this process? Uh, biggest thing. I mean, I do think from the process, again, I think that um, I really love figures. I think there's something uh, with Alanis that reminded me of some of uh, the revelations that I felt as I was uncovering Ai Weiwei's story and thinking about uh, an artist in their kind of, you know, youth in their like, you know, most, uh, you know, a, a, a vibrant time in their youth in their like 20s and to see what mattered to them in a completely different kind of time in the culture. Um, and with Ai Weiwei, he was in New York in the 20s and in his 20s and um, you know, it was a, a very different context for him, but to see the, it's a way to kind of appreciate the development of an artist. And I think what I loved, and it made me think of him too, it's like being concerned with the same things. I think that there's something that about these kind of magnetic artistic personalities that um, it's, it's, it keeps being proven to me that, you know, it, people don't, you know, even though fame and circumstances of life can radically change a person, I think there's still the same core of, um, you know, the things that matter to them and what they are when they're like, you know, their, their genuine selves and, and their concerns as an artist. And I just found with Alanis watching hours and hours of her hanging out, you know, backstage, behind the scenes, um, from the mid nineties, I was like, wow, like she's so amazing. And she was the same, a lot of the stuff she talks about caring about now is the same stuff she cared about then. And I think there's something that, um, makes you feel really good when you see that in a person, you know, like obviously things have changed, but, um, the things that matter as an artist about, um, what you see in society that you're interested in and what you want to address and also, how you regard yourself personally and, and your own development. Um, I just think it's, for me, always really inspiring. That's why I love doing films about artists, you know, and I can, you know, musician even better because then you have this incredible footage of her performing too. And uh, what about the people you chose to interview? Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. Um, uh, the, our, our interviews are kind of a mix of, um, uh, you know, people who were covering the music scene um, or part of the music scene at the time uh, with a couple sort of more uh, contemporary voices. Um, and then, you know, we chose to, uh, um, I, I talked to many people and chose to put on, on you know, on camera, uh, some members of her band um, I thought was really important because for me that was like a whole new aspect of you know I knew the album so well but like I said I didn't I'd never been to a show and I never really thought about what would a live show of this album have been and it's like it is a rock album and you know it's it's um, not going to be something where like today where you could just have other different kinds of uh, electronic ways to create your sound you know it was really um, uh, like a rad show <laughs> like the um the improvisations you know there was clearly so much that was happening on stage that I was really interested in and then there's the dynamic of it's a bunch of young guys with a you know woman uh headliner who is becoming the biggest name on the planet at that moment and like what's happening 
with the fun they had, which was so evident in the footage, what's hap what happens with egos, what happens, you know, behind the scenes. So I was very interested in how they had experienced that tour. Um, Glenn Ballard, who had uh, worked with Alanis to produce and, and, and co-write the album with her, um, you know, was someone also, I really wanted to hear about that experience. Um, I feel like uh, we kind of wanted to have the, the film be anchored by Alanis, but these moments where it needs to feel like a chorus of voices to kind of come in. And there's like a really beautiful handoff of the storytelling too, where people come in where they should, like Guy Siri comes in at the moment where it's like, almost all is lost. Nobody wants this album. He's the guy who like immediately gets it. And then it can get handed off to Lisa Warden who was at, you know, K rock where it's like, we have this song it just goes on the air and it, like lights the world on fire. Um, and I really love all the sort of handoff of the storytelling that happens along the way. And you see how it starts to become a story that by the end is much bigger than just Alanis's, you know, experience of life that she brought to writing this album. Like then it becomes, you know, a tour and an album that belongs to the world. Um, and so, yeah, so that's why we kind of chose to interview the people we did. Great. And talk to me a little bit about the, the discovery process, all of the, the archival footage. Um, so you, know, you, you were talking about the, you know, going into that storage with her and finding uh, things like how did that help shape the, how you told the story? It was amazing. Thank goodness Alanis is a real, has that real hoarder side where she like kept all these things. <laughs> she also had this amazing ephemera. I mean, if we had all the time in the world and all the budget in the world, it would have been really cool also to film, you know, the clothes or guitars or, you know, she had so many like objects as well. But of course the footage is what we are most excited about. Um, and it was a real puzzle of lots of different, um, lots of different, uh, types of media that weren't necessarily um, logged anywhere. So, you know, they had their own labels, but, uh, you know, it's whatever someone wrote quickly as they, you know, put the tape away. Um, and then this gorgeous um, film material that she, at towards the end of her, what was essentially an 18-month tour um, in October 1996, um, she hired a film crew to um, record a couple interviews and to uh, arena concerts. And that's why there's this stunning, there's like a mix of real handheld kind of shitty audio, <laughs> you know, uh, performances, but also this like totally professionally, incredibly preserved um, material. Um, but I just want to give a shout out to Bayvac, um, who are an organization, a nonprofit organization in the Bay Area who are masters of preservation and in this case, you know, digitization um, and worked with us during a pandemic. I mean, I really think it was um, a lot of technicians who were, had brought equipment home and were doing it at home for us. And we would sort of get these batches over Google Drive um, of, you know, the, the smaller, you know, preview files so we could look and we kind of get maybe like 20 hours at a time um, of, of these tapes. And that did shape, you know, I feel like I didn't get it all at once and then get to go interview her. Everything was just happening kind of at the same time. And also after the interview, like getting more and more and some of the material in the film, like the bathtub interview scene, we didn't sync, have the synced audio to go with that scene until the last few weeks of the edit. And it, you know, bridged this moment of the past all the way to the kind of the present so beautifully for us and the answers, it felt like a, divinely provided a moment. So I feel like in the way that Verite footage can give you those sort of like, wow, inspired, like, ooh, this fits perfectly kind of moments in the edit. For us also having this huge amount of archive um, provided that as well. And I really love working with that material. That's great. So we, we, we're at time, but I don't know if there's anything that you would like to share with our audience. Um, I guess that, uh, you know, this is going to be on HBO in November. And I just feel like that, you know, it, it, I hope you want to watch it again and definitely tell your friends. I feel like it's one of those movies that 
I want people to enjoy like with other people and singing along. And it's kind of like made to have those moments too. So um, yeah, just, you know, tell your friends and, you know, whether you can have a big gathering or a small gathering. Um, I just hope people can enjoy it. And, you know, it, it brings them the kind of joy. Like, I think there's a lot of different emotions and revelations in the film, but ultimately it was such a joyful film to, um, put together and the team, uh, who I also want to thank, you know, from our producers, to our editors, it was a really close knit team. And, um, we just got so much joy from working on this in a really dark time. I mean, in the, the, you know, the, the, the pre-vaccine entire year of the pandemic, um, we, you know, Jagged Little Pill was our soundtrack and thinking about what all the, all the implications of her story was like, you know, what we were engaged with and it was a beautiful experience. Great, thank you so much, Allison. Thank you, Joanna, and thanks to Tiff. Thank you.